next is uh, Adam, uh, who's going to talk to you about, um, you know, asking your developer about the rise of the API economy. And uh, Adam, finally nice to, to meet you, like in person. We, we've been connected for a while on LinkedIn. And we've seen your stuff around. But this is the first time you've actually been able to speak. So very yeah, nice. Good to see you. Good to hear. Awesome, awesome. So I see you're already set up. So I, I'll let you crack on with it. Then hopefully we can have a chat at the uh, end. Enjoy. That sounds good. Yeah. Uh, and thank you, Alan. Uh, a year ago, I was standing on the stage in Paris, maybe a little bit jet lagged. Uh, so a very different experience here in my home office this year, though, to get to your time, good afternoon to most of you who are on that time, I did have to get up a little early. So maybe I have a little bit of that uh, that same jet lagged feeling here. But I know it's been a, a long day for for most of you, I'm really excited to share these uh, lessons from API companies. This is coming back from I mean over 10 years of uh, you know back to my time at Programmable Web and stints at a couple of API companies. Now to to where I work with API companies to create content that reaches more developers. And in the talks I do, I I often have this time to first Twilio slide. Uh, and it's and and you can play this game in in all API talks. Uh, well, this one it's uh, it's pretty simple. It's uh, the second slide, or if you if you count the title of the talk, it's maybe the first slide. Uh, title of the talk coming from this classic Twilio billboard. Uh, and really, you can't talk about API companies without talking about Twilio. And. Uh, You've probably heard a, a lot of different ways of talking about APIs, private, public, some, some, uh, some uh, somewhere in between, but we're gonna really focus on public APIs. And I wanna talk about a few different types of public APIs. There's different ways you can break this down, but I will be talking about product supporting and then really an API company is a developer product. And there's a third one that I'll introduce later as well. Product supporting, so I, I worked at Zapier for a few years. Uh, any, any of those 2000 apps, almost all of those are going to be product supporting. This is a SaaS that has an API. They don't necessarily consider developers the primary audience, but they have a way to be able to enable automations and integrations. And then, of course, this developer product, which is the, the part that we're going to be talking about here, Twilio uh, being a, a prime example. In the chat, go ahead and, and drop. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put one more logo on this slide. So go ahead and, uh, and put in the, in the chat. I bet there are some of you who can guess uh, which logo it will be. Uh, Stripe. It's like the, the duo of API companies. And we'll mention... I'll mention more in this talk, but just to give you a flavor, this is when I talk about an API company, that is what I mean. And so we're going to talk about the secrets of these great API companies. And then regardless of whether you're an API company, I think you can look for who is your developer audience if you have a public API. And then even if you don't have a public API, there are things you can learn from these API companies that you can bring into your developer experience. So we'll start here with the secrets. So I mentioned that we have a few others. Uh, Twilio and Stripe are like the twins of API companies. I think if there's, <laughs> if there's room for a triplet, one I would like to see mentioned more is Plaid. If you look at their developer experience, their developer go to market. I mean, it really is very similar to the Twilio Stripe approach. And then I'm gonna drop one more on you. And this is one you will probably would not bundle with these, but I would say it's, it's developer uh, audience may be larger than any of these ones. Uh, it's been around longer than any of these ones. And that is the Google Maps platform which you might not think of as an API company, certainly Google does many other things, right? But the product itself is very much an API product. And 
has uh, for its first six years didn't charge for it except for enterprise deals had only really maps and maybe a couple of other services but it's grown itself into it calls it a platform it's at the very least a a suite of tools that work really well together um and is now you know a big business for google and i think is another one we can learn from so if you think about what these companies and many other API companies like them do well, you probably right off the top think of beautiful docs, right? The the classic Twilio kind of approach. You maybe maybe you think Google doesn't belong on there, but uh, very interestingly, the the Google Maps docs have have long been incredibly interactive, and so. Uh, you know, that's a, that's a, a sign of an API company also is, is having docs that really help you understand the API. Uh, Plaid, I mentioned, belongs in this. And then, of course, Stripe is often, I mean, if you're talking docs, that might be the first one that people mention. But, of course, beautiful docs is not <laughs> the only thing about an API company. And I think more important and more foundational to these companies is that they know the developer problem that they solve. And I think if you look at what makes an API company, that is the number one most important thing and that it should be a difficult problem. This is a uh, a diagram from SendGrid where, where I worked and I, uh, I would I would give talks and I would say I invented SendGrid, which I think uh, if the founders had seen that might have said, wait, where were you five years ago, guy, when you uh, <laughs> when when we invented SendGrid? But what I meant when I said that is that as a developer, I had seen the huge problem that SendGrid solves. I had been sending email from <laughs> from a server that that we hosted and ending up in spam and dealing with the problem of trying to get whitelisted and all of the things that go into that, that now SendGrid, which is owned by Twilio. So if you're counting the number of Twilio references in here, you can count this one. So that SendGrid exposes uh, this difficult problem just through a simple API. And I would also say that there is a real world connection aspect. So not only is there a problem, but you know, in the case of SendGrid, there's manual effort that it takes where you have to maintain the these whitelist records. Uh, you have to kick customers off of your platform who are sending spam, right? There are all these, these aspects that make it difficult in Twilio's case, you know, I think one of the reasons why Twilio what became as popular as it was early on was there wasn't any other way where you send an API and it makes your phone buzz. And so there was this sort of real world aspect to it where in a time where you know, everything cool had to be in a native app, Twilio said, well, SMS and voice have been around forever. And that's the foundation we're going to choose. And we're going to enable you to do a lot with that. And then, of course, Plaid and Stripe and many financial APIs, uh, there's a lot of old technology that that enables you to get through a modern interface. Um, and so, you know, I can walk down to my bank here locally, but I can also uh, get to it via the Plaid API. So uh, being able to provide that real world connection via API, I think is another key piece of what makes an API company. And then I think they go beyond this, we know how to run it, sort of the open source approach of, uh, of providing a service and you happen to be the best at it. I think that's API companies deeply understand the problem and that there's more than just um, just that sort of service on top. And in fact, some of the best will 
share everything they know about their uh, about the problem that they solve. I uh, my local ice cream shop uh, <laughs> has a cookbook which I own, but I still walk down <laughs> and buy their ice cream uh, directly as well. Uh, and to to put this into a technical aspect, you can see Gremlin has a huge guide, 20,000 words of everything you need to know about chaos engineering. And yet they provide a service that um, that does that. Um, and we've, uh, every developer written these before as well. This is a reverse geocoding guide uh, for a European startup that uh, provides geocoding. That's converting latitude and longitude to something human readable. So when you share the knowledge that you have, you're able to really show developers that you understand their problems. And developers appreciate that, but you wanna be able to make sure you understand who that developer audience is, which is uh, this next part. So I mentioned there's a third type of public API. So product supporting and developer products we've talked about. I think another one to consider is this developer enabled product. And so this on the surface looks a lot like a developer product, but the core audience that you wanna reach is not necessarily a developer. As an example, we can look at Content Stack, great company and very API driven Early on, maybe we're more developer focused, but I think you can see, I mean, even in you know their most recent public, uh, the way that they describe it publicly is they're kind of marketer, maybe product first, definitely developer enabled, but not necessarily going after developers specifically. SendGrid. Again, we, we see uh, some mention of developers on the homepage, that's, that's great. Uh, even a curl request down there. Uh, but I think also primarily looking at kind of that marketing audience. And uh, so being a more developer enabled. And even, I mean, I think this is a path that a lot of even developer companies go, API companies. Twilio Flex. You can talk to sales to, <laughs> to get access to it. And its studio is a kind of uh, drag and drop, low code experience, not necessarily a developer experience. So clearly still um, a company that cares about developers, but there are aspects that are developer enabled as opposed to uh, developer product. Uh, even though the foundation is a developer product. And you can even say that this billboard that I started out with is developer enabled. I mean, ask your developer, it's it's recognizing that the person seeing this may not be a developer, uh, but they would be interested in what Twilio has to offer. So sometimes, Sometimes you think you know that <laughs> developer audience. And as we discovered at Zapier, where I worked on the platform side, uh, you don't always you don't always know it. So the platform connects APIs to a very business user focused front end, but on the platform side, it's all APIs. And so before I went there, so a team had built a CLI to be able to access the platform. And that was based on big customer feedback. And, um, and so really it seemed like that's what developers wanted. They wanted to be able to build these integrations with code. <laughs> and so you can see when we launched it, we kept kind of the button for the, the old way and then said, hey, there's this new CLI. And over several months, we made some <laughs> some updates along the way <clears throat> as we recognized, okay, people are going the old way. Maybe that's because it's a button. Well, you can see in the bottom right where we eventually got to, which was, hey, use the new thing. And by the way, this old thing is super old. You shouldn't use it. People still use the old way. 
And that showed us that the audience that was there was less, less of a developer audience than we had originally thought. And so really as I, what I wanna make clear when we talk about API companies is that there are very few that are truly dev products. And before you go down a route of being a dev product, make sure you ask you, make sure you double check that you're not product supporting, which is that SaaS side. And uh, nothing against being a product supporting API either. Uh, one of them was uh, acquired in the last fortnight for uh, 27 plus billion dollars. I uh, and kind of ask yourself about this developer enabled part because that will really help you to know which audience you want to reach directly. And as with uh, as with the uh, product supported, nothing wrong with being developer enabled. I, I would put a lot of marketing tools into that category. A lot of the financial APIs we're seeing, I think probably fit in that. Data as a service definitely does. And uh, not nearly enough time to talk about <laughs> how some API, how some AWS services might be developer enabled rather than developer products, but that's a that's a, a tasty nugget for discussion in the future. So, uh, a quick test you can do is the code on a homepage test. So, ask yourself if I put code on the homepage, is there sort of a gut reaction that says, ooh, that's gonna turn off some audience? If so, you are likely not a, a dev product. Doesn't mean there aren't things you can learn, there definitely are, and uh, we're low on time, so I'm gonna go through these tactics quickly, but you can find other, uh, I gave a whole talk uh, from Nordic APIs a couple months ago about uh, about exactly this, the developer experience. And I would say that a lot of times you go looking for what is the Twilio strategy, and that's why I called this tactics. That's really hard to do with any API company to know why they did something, um, but you can definitely see what they did. And what API companies do well is this continuum here. The first impression through I said first 100 API calls, it's really the first success that, uh, that someone has, which who knows how many API calls that might take. Uh, and I, I compare it to buying a new car. You know, you buy a new car and you don't immediately read through this manual, but before you can drive off the lot, they give you the quick, quick uh, this is how you start it up, this is how you get it in drive, this is how you do the steering wheel. You get a very short tutorial. That's the getting started guide that you have. And that is uh, probably the most important piece that you can take away from an API company is how they get someone to that, that first, you know, the time to hello world. Uh, and some quick, quick guidelines along there to get you there. You want to get to that quick initial win. If the car uh, and not covering everything as you go. That's a, something sometimes people try to do is go through everything possible. If the car analogy didn't do it for you, uh, think of learning the piano. That, that uh, first experience is really finding middle C, maybe playing a C scale. And first success is a melody or a chord progression. So being able to go beyond that first experience. Use cases are a great way to take someone beyond that spot. Twilio does this well, others do too. But being able to say, uh, here's a sample app and here you can quickly deploy it that fits this use case. Or here is this problem and we're going to talk about it in a problem aspect, not, um, not sort of a solution aspect. Problem comes before the solution. Patients aren't showing up to appointments. That's why you need to do appointment reminders. Taking that approach as opposed to, hey, let's send an SMS, which is uh, very product and solution focused. And when you're focused on that problem, you can use 
the developer content mind trick, which is you can look that up. I wrote that at heavy bit. Uh, but that's the signature content I talked about before. So the mind trick being, let me talk so much about this problem to a developer audience that they will clearly see that I know how to solve it. And that's the sort of thing that an API company does really well that I think could be applied to any API, including a private API, but especially to some of those public APIs that are maybe developer enabled. Um, and if you really understand who that developer audience is, what are the problems that they wanna solve, then you can come at them with some of these ways of being able to get them through that first impression, first experience, first success, and uh, enable them to, to do the things that these API companies do. So thank you very much. Adam, thank you very, very much. So we got a couple of minutes here before the fireside chat. Sure, so yeah. Just thank you, first of all, because I've had imposter syndrome for a long time now. Um, you know, I, I keep going to this conference. Well, you know, maybe the developer isn't your customer, meaning person who's like the decision maker and people kind of look at me a bit funny so so now that you know we've got this developer enabled as is the uh like the terminology i've been kind of like missing and and, and you kind of nailed right, that good so so now I, I feel you know confident even to the extent you know i i say i make api portals as a service and not developer portals as a service simply because yeah. You know, developer isn't the only actor, right? I say, okay, you've got people who are maybe like not so technical, and you wouldn't then put like yeah. code on the front page because you'd scare them off, right? And yep. I think the thing where the industry were going wrong is that we put everywhere developer dot your company dot com, and as you know, a non technical guy who might be interested in those API products, you see developer dot, and you think, okay, well, that's not for me, right? And you don't go there, yeah. so. Thank you so much. That 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 did resonate with me a lot. Good, yeah. Uh, great, yeah. So, um, where else did I take from there? One of the interesting things I found as well is you talked about Stripe, and uh, when I've been on the Stripe documentation, it's the most beautiful documentation in the world. But they do have at the top, if you've noticed, I don't know if you've noticed this, but they have the words um, I wrote down: uh, "Not a developer?" Question mark. Yes. I, yeah, I have seen that. Yeah. Yeah, documentation right at the very top to like pull those guys out of there because they yeah. uh, want them into more of like an API marketplace kind of setup as well. So yeah, yeah, I think that gets to to that uh, you know that uh, concept of the invisible audience that uh, that I talked about briefly there, and I think that even these uh, these API companies are seeing more and more of those, and it was probably four and a half years ago or so, I wrote uh, a Medium post called uh, API's Dirty Little Secret, which was exactly that. Is like, there are people who are not developers, or not the developers you would think. Uh, that's the other thing is I don't think anyone, call, no one identifies as, I'm a non-developer. Uh, right. But, uh, but there are a lot of people who are trying to, they know that these APIs can solve their problems. Yeah. And especially with the API companies that do such a great job of explaining that problem and showing that they have a solution to it, you yeah. have uh, people who are not, I'll, I'll, I'll say people who are not writing code most of the day right. who are right. trying to understand how to, make, uh, how to make it work. And so I think if you're able to really dig into who that audience is, that's uh, that an API company like approach can work for many companies uh, if you kind of expand that definition of developer. Absolutely, absolutely. I spoke to a guy in the States called Sam and, and he was uh, saying it's his job to find APIs to plug into like use cases, but he's really a non-technical guy. And he was going to all these sites and he'd have to go and get a developer, drag him into the room and say, explain this to me. I need to understand it yeah. to know if we need it or not. And I think it's also an important thing is that, you know, there's always going to be a, a developer as a part of the decision process as well, right? You know, they have to sign yeah. off. If the code looks rubbish, they're not going to uh, have it. 
Adam, yeah. that was fantastic. We, we have to uh, cut this now, but uh, thank you so yeah. much. We saved the best for last. And uh, <laughs> yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, you as well. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay, guys, that was a fantastic day. It was very full. I'm definitely going to get a beer now. Um, thank you as well to Jean. Uh, I guess he's going to tell us we need to go to the uh, fireside chat now, right? Yep. And yep. now you, there is another talk with Mehdi and the co-founder, Abhinav Ashana and Abhijit Kane. Uh, if you want to join there, you can. Perfect. And which stage is that in? Uh, the first one. The stage. Okay. Track one. You'll find it. Yeah. Okay, okay yeah. guys. So oh, I think we'll, uh, we'll sign off. Then uh, Jerome as well. And thank you to everyone who, who stuck with us today.